Sarah in Oregon, you are on with Jim and Matt. Hello. How are you? And how can we help? Oh, boy, I have so much I can talk to you about, Matt, because I'm a big fan. Um, and I want to thank you, first of all, for what you're doing, because I really hate religion, and I think it's far more destructive than it is helpful, and I think it's behind what we call the culture war. But well, thanks. I also did say that I, I'm an atheist, but I believe in, uh, well, reincarnation is kind of an unfortunate word, but I think I've been here before. So... I guess I guess the best thing to do is to tell us what you mean by that and why. Wh tell us what you believe and why. So, what is it about reincarnation that you you believe, and why? Well, I'll try not to make this a long story. Um, I've been a pretty hardcore atheist, anti-theist, pretty much since I was fourteen, and. In about 1974, I'm 68, so I'm, I'm not young. I got into Scientology, which I'm out of for a long time. But um, as part of their counseling, you're hooked up to this thing called the e meter. I think you've probably heard of that, right? Yeah, it's a couple of cans with some wire that goes in to bullshit people into thinking that they're actually testing for something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> actually, yeah, actually, it's a. Uh, it's a it's an ohm meter is all it is, and it passes a current from one hand to the other. And um, when you have a thought that has any kind of emotional charge to it, you get a specific read on this. It's meter. It's actually fairly sensitive. And in sort of tracking down what I thought, I'm, I'm curious. Going back to you, yeah, you say it's an O meter. Have you actually like grabbed an O meter and changed your thoughts to see what happens with a real low meter, like and a good one, like a fluke or something like that? No, but um, when I was yeah, in technology, I, I, I had an E meter, and right. I, uh, it, I messed with but it. What you're saying it doesn't work. Really it, can do with it. It, do, it doesn't work. I'm if sorry. you if you get a good O meter, uh, ohm meter, like a fluke or something else and you grab the leads and try to change your thoughts, you will not change your resistance. Yeah, well, I, I don't know how it works technically. I mean, it may just be that you have a certain thought and you, you uh, squeeze the hands, you squeeze your hands a little harder. Anyway, they, they track me down. You know, they always ask when you're going down painful incidents, is there an early similar incident? And I got down to birth, which I'm not sure I actually even remembered any of, but it was, it was interesting. Yeah. And then they said earlier similar. And I got this image of myself as somebody else. I immediately knew who it was and exactly who I was with and what I was doing. And subsequently, since they were in the family, I looked up a bunch of stuff that I had never seen before an old trunk of my mother's. And it was turned out to be a very emotional experience. And I should say that, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, skeptical about everything and this is not this is this is a pretty half-hearted belief but it's it's also pretty convincing <laughs> just because of how i feel about certain periods of time and certain things that i know about my family right. that so, I have no way, so we have no you, you you had this experience how did you determine that the experience is based on something real and not just something your brain was what was the process you walked through on that just the uh, response of the counselor who's um, looking at the e-meter and she kept saying, what's that meaning? Okay, so I don't I don't care about the e-meter. Stop mentioning the e-meter because it's complete BS. From the beginning, there is no science behind it. There's nothing behind it other than it is just a tool to uh, hook gullible people. There's nothing to it. So I don't care what the e-meter says. E-meter is bullshit. What was the rest of the process other than the e-meter? Was there anything you did to actually prove that the experience was based on reality? I'm here. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Is there other than the e-meter? What else was there? Because I'm not going to take anything the e-meter says as anywhere close to reality. So, other than the e-meter, what else did you well, do to prove that your experience was real? Well, I just, I went through some old pictures and letters that were just looking at them. I had a lot of emotional reaction to them. 
So that's that's all you have. And uh, just you went through a bunch of old letters. Old letters from who and where? Well, from the person that I think I was before. Okay, so how old were these letters and, and how do you know you haven't seen them before or heard them talked about before? Well, because I would, I think I would remember that unless it was before I was about age four. Well, so here's kind, the, here's kind of the, here's kind of the problem. People can build memories from things that are suggested to them and from things that never ever happened. And they become, become firmly convinced those memories are real when they aren't. And so how did you go about assuring yourself that what you were, your brain was doing was putting together something from we've all seen old timey photos, we've all seen old timey houses, we've all seen you know, a certain set of things that when you put it together with a narrative, you could then conclude that this was in fact the case. So other than your own experience, what did you use to get to the reality of the situation? Well, that's it. I don't have anything else. That's it. Oh, okay. So why should we take anything what you're saying as to be true? Yeah, I don't see any reason why you should believe it, let alone why anybody else should believe it. Because if I had experiences and the only thing that I had to do to judge it was kind of my impressions or how I felt rather than some actual evidence or data, um, my position would be, I don't yet know what the best explanation for this is. I couldn't possibly look at something like this and say, oh, well, the best explanation is that I was reincarnated because we have no evidence that that can ever occur, but we have mountains of evidence that your brain can make shit up. So if you don't have a way to tell the difference between the two, why would you ever um, believe that reincarnation is the best explanation? Well, I don't know if it's the best explanation. How do you know it's an explanation at all? How do you know it's a valid explanation? I, I describe, usually describe this to people as something I like to believe. Well, why would you? Well, okay, okay. Now, this is frustrating, and I apologize in advance, but why the fuck would you believe the things you like to believe? And why would you call into a show to say, I have no evidence for this, I believe in it, and I only believe in it because I like to? Well... Because I wanted to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to someone who just wants to call into the show to say I have no... I Here, let me tell you what I believe and why. I believe I'm reincarnation, and the reason is because I like to believe it. Well, congratulations. But that has nothing to do with reality or truth or justification or reasonableness or anything. Hell, you might as well just say, I believe that aliens abduct me and replace me every single night because that's what I like to believe. But that's absolutely useless for a show that's about discussing the why part. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Okay. Thanks for calling. Well, thank you anyway. Sure. I want to thank you for your stance on trans people being a trans person, and especially oh, for uh, how you really shut down uh, you shut down Dinesh D'Souza when he was trying to compare being trans to yeah. somebody who thought they were a toad. Yeah, his, his frog shit topic. was absolutely, I was so livid on stage, but yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Sarah. Well, thank you I, for that. If you come up with something where you have a good reason for your belief to where you think that this would be compelling to somebody else or you're useful to somebody else, call call us back. But if you're just, you know, hey, here's what I believe because I like it. Well, I like to believe things that have good evidence. I don't like to believe things that don't have good evidence. So what somebody else likes to believe isn't really relevant. Yeah, I don't, how did you have evidence for that though? It's well, that's not, that's not our problem. So you're asking, how could you have evidence for it? Which is an admission that you don't think it's even possible to have evidence for it, which means is an admission that you don't even think there could ever be a reasonable justification for it. Now, you don't know that, but if you're convinced of that and you still believe it, and, and at least you're honest, I, I give you full marks for being honest, Sarah, that, that you believe this because you like to believe it. But my question now is, and I don't want you don't need to answer it now, but think about it. Why is it that you like to believe something for which you don't have good evidence outside of how you feel and for which you don't even think there could be evidence? Why would you like to believe something like that? Well, I don't fully discount my own personal experience because, of course, it's my own. It's not the same as listening to somebody else's. And I would take probably the same re reaction that you do. And also there's the obvious thing is nobody likes the idea of, of never being again. Well, you know, tough. I'm 68 and my heart's in bad shape. 
I, I, I get it. So there's that. I, I'm not looking forward to not existing, although I understand I'm not going to experience not existing, so not existing isn't going to do me any harm. It's kind of like being afraid of nothing. I realize that. Kind of. Because. It's a little more than that, I would say. Okay, but okay. Yeah. Anyway, Sarah, thanks so much for calling. Uh, think about that. Maybe, you know, if, if you get better reasons, cool. If not, uh, keep being awesome in other respects. Hmm? Okay. Hey, how do I get an email to you? I, I sent one and it, I got two messages. One of them said that it didn't go through, but then another one said that someone would get back to me, which is kind of contradictory, but nobody ever got back to me. So I'm assuming the first one was right. That what it didn't what email through. address did you use where someone said they'd get back to you? Because they, all right, so oh, here, let's make this know. easy. If you want to email the show, the email address is TV at atheist-community.org. That goes to all the people behind the scenes. Justin's the primary person who answers those emails. We've had him on here as a guest before. Um, there's no guarantee whether you email tv at atheist-community.org or even if you email my own email address, sans.deity at gmail.com, there's no guarantee you're going to get an answer because I have 1,500 unread emails right now, and that was after archiving 14,000 of them just a couple months ago. <laughs> oh, Okay. It's a lot. Well, maybe somebody but, connected you can read. I've been a musician for about 50 years, and a lot of my songs are about uh, religion. And I just I thought maybe uh, people who are non-believers might like to hear that. So there's a there's a bunch of uh, you know. there's the there's the Discord, there's the Facebook groups. Um, you know, record some of them, share them with people in the in the community, and see what they think. Hmm? Oh yeah. Well, I have them on the I have them on the Bandcamp page. I have. I've been making music for about 15 cool. years, so I have it awesome. all online. Anyway, I don't want to take any more of your time because you have, you have people to, to beat up on. Yep. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, it's it's strange. So it, I, I, the Scientology link was, I want, my immediate reaction was that, well, this isn't relevant. You're telling me you used to be a Scientologist and that really has nothing to do with reincarnation, except that it kind of does because the same people who would buy into that notion of, of Scientology are going to buy into reincarnation. Now, it's great that Sarah just acknowledges, you know, hey, I believe it because I like it. Yeah. But man, I wish Sarah and everybody else could figure out that believing something, I don't even think that's possible. I think it's actually, I, I don't want to just say somebody's a liar, but I think they're lying to themselves as well because you don't get to choose what you believe. So you don't get to say, I really wish that reincarnation was true. So I'm just going to believe it. You can be yeah. convinced for really bad reasons, but yeah, and <laughs> the e meter thing is just ridiculous. You can, I mean, no matter how you, how they explain it, you can do the same thing. Like I said, with a, a digital mic, mic, a, a digital multimeter, grab the grab the ends and do the exact same thing and see that it has nothing to do with your thought process whatsoever. There's just no no way for the uh, for the, your what's going on in your brain to make it down through your rest of your nervous system to give you any kind of indication of what you're thinking. So, yeah, I think one of the things is I'm not completely sure that it is that the e meter is the same as an o meter. Um, I've heard that, and I've also heard it denied. And you know, they're they're the Scientologists are like, well, we're not going to tell you what our e meters are, and uh, anything you've heard about what they actually do, you're just wrong. Uh, yeah, you need to come but, in and get audited. Right, and if, if they actually work, they could actually make quite a bit of money by grabbing their Nobel Peace Prize and, um, or it would be Peace Prize, be a Nobel Prize in science, um, and uh, selling those things to actual real psychologists and psychiatrists, so. Yeah. And they're not. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the faith healers just seem to not be out there walking around to hospitals curing everybody. They just seem to be doing it on television where they can get donations. But well, I was on uh, Twitter the, earlier this week and someone was advertising for a faith healing and I was like, hey, why don't you just send them to the hospital and instead of going to this you know, remote location out in the middle of nowhere, just go to a hospital and do it there. That'll be much more uh, convincing yeah. to everybody that you can do what you say you can do. Yeah, I, I dare... Here, I'm going to start this so that somebody can clip it out and put up. Hi, I'm Matt Dillon from The Atheist Experience, and I double dog dare any faith healer to walk into St. Jude's Children's Hospital and start actually healing the kids without somebody trying to tip you or you trying to make a penny off of it. Go ahead. Yeah. 